G'day viewers, this is Troy from Troy's Digital Arts channel. I'm uh, embarking on a new uh, MBTV project. Well, it's uh, pretty much a build on from an old MBTV project that I did back in 2017. Um, I never, ma I actually never made a construction log video on building this uh, Nepco disc uh, receiver. But um, yeah, at the time I was, I was doing it for a top secret sort of... Uh, project um for the radio club which involved uh light wave communication but anyway that was the reason why i didn't make any construction logs i should have but yeah too late now but anyway i did make a video some time ago demonstrating this uh set and working operation well um it's now time to modify the set and put a much better uh nipco disc that's got precisely uh, laser cut holes in it which is the plan I'm going to be doing for this uh, Nipco receiver firstly um, firstly I'm just going to say yeah this is a this is a my first uh, Nipco disc receiver that I made um, which actually has uh, synchronization on it and uh, yeah the synchronization works it, it takes a little bit of coaxing to get the image into into proper sync but once I get into sync it's it pretty much stays in sync but unfortunately um, seeing that these the, seeing that um, this is all hand drilled holes and um, even using a using a uh, a paper using a uh, plotted uh, printout I can still can't drill accurate holes Partially because of the grooves in the disc, the, the drill bit will sort of slightly move to one groove or the other. Also, trying to get it on, on target is just, it's just virtually, virtually impossible. Or virtually near impossible without some kind of, um, without some sort of templates. In the old days, they, yeah, they, had, um, they had to use some sort of uh, template to get the uh, holes accurately drilled in in the discs and I, I think the discs were often a lot bigger and and uh yeah so there's probably a little bit more margin for error but in uh but in today's uh with today's technology um yeah they discs can be uh laser cut and very precisely and um yeah i've ordered from uh the nbtv association in in england um a few uh manila discs I've ordered three manila, manila discs and uh, a uh, manila strip for an aperture drum, which I'll be doing in a future project. But yeah, for now, um, I've got this. I've got I've uh, I've got three manila discs, accurately uh, accurately laser cut. So that's the. Uh, just got to try and. Here we go. Um, so that's that. Those small holes are the uh, scanning holes, and uh, the big holes are the, the synchronization holes. Anyway, um, and we've got some holes here, and and this will fit onto a uh, gear hub. So my plan is is to is to uh, is to mount mount this uh, Manila disc to to that little hub there. Remove this uh, record disc, and um, yes, yeah, stick the uh, Manila disc on there. Um, realign the uh, re realign the the um, the uh, sync section, which involves a uh, photo diode and a photo transistor. I'm gonna have to reposition that to line up with these holes. And reposition the uh, the LED matrix to line up with the uh, with with the uh, scan holes, and uh, hopefully it should hopefully it should be pretty straightforward. But like with a lot of projects, shit can happen. There's the uh, shit goes wrong factor, and then you just gotta muck around until you get it all fixed up. So I'm expecting that. I'm more than likely going to have to maybe raise or lower the the, uh, the lead matrix in the uh, magnifying glass. I expect I'm going to have to probably do that. 
Uh, yeah, I think that's probably, hopefully uh, that's all I'll have to do. Anyway, anyway, so yeah, the plan is to replace the uh, record disc with the Manila disc. Manila disc um, is floppy, but the MBTV Association said that that uh, when, it's, when it's spinning, uh, it will uh, be nice and taut. Anyway, cool. Um, so yeah, that's the plan. This uh, hopefully, hopefully it should all work out nicely. Anyhow, see you in the next uh, video update when I have that Manila disc on. This is Troy from Troy's Digital Arts Channel, signing out.